okay, I confess, I'm a believer. AI's a game changer. Described by some as the greatest invention since the internet, and maybe since fire, I too am convinced it's going to radically transform our politics, our economies, and our societies. And while there's undoubtedly a lot of hyperbole about AI, we're already seeing an explosion of its positive benefits. AI-enabled innovations are supercharging creativity, personalizing learning, and expanding inclusion, and contributing to scientific discoveries that boggle the imagination. One recent study predicts that it could add around $13 trillion of additional productivity by 2030. And over the next few years, more than 75% of all CEOs, they claim they're going to adopt some form of AI tech. And the AI revolution, it's only just getting started. But I'd be lying if I didn't say that AI is also keeping me up at night. It has a monumental dark side. And the risks range from the existential to the annoying. The good news is, is that AI regulation to improve safety and alignment, well, it's taking off a point I'll come back to. The bad news is, is that most governments, companies, and digital rights groups, they're not moving nearly fast enough to keep pace with technological change. What's more, a big divide's emerging over how to regulate AI, and this has potentially massive implications for us all. Today, I wanna to speak about three issues. First, a few universal risks posed by AI. Second, some of the regulations and standards emerging around the world to mitigate them. And third, the ways in which AI is viewed in the global south, notably Africa. Suffice to say, this is an extraordinarily complex and fast moving space, but let's get right into it. So what do I think are the most consequential risks posed by AI? Well, it won't surprise you that the first and obviously most unsettling risk is that AI poses an extinction level threat to humanity. Now, there are several variations to this argument, and I think it's useful to parse between them. The one that seems to receive the most attention is that sentient or super intelligent AI could intentionally or unintentionally destroy human civilization. The basic argument seems to be that the interests of a new alien artificial general intelligence will be incompatible or unaligned with human interests. To put it simply, machines will compete with humans over scarce resources, and the smart machines will win. Now, while widely criticized for being too sci-fi and sensationalist, the truth is, is that serious researchers from Anthropic and Google to Oxford and Stanford, they've raised similar concerns. A recent poll of AI specialists around the world found that 16% echoed these same anxieties about civilization-ending potential events from AI. The truth, perhaps as Sam Altman's infamous poster above his desk says, is that no one knows what happens next. But there are other more immediate ways that AI poses existential threats. For example, AI could be weaponized to build, say, chemical weapons, to develop and spread cyber viruses, or even trigger a nuclear exchange. More immediately, some intelligence agencies fear that AI could be used to destabilize decision-making, target critical infrastructure, and expand the power of techno-authoritarian regimes. This is not as distant a risk as you might think. Back in 2022, one AI model generated over 40,000 new biological weapons in just under six hours. The point is, is that the same technologies revolutionizing medicine can also be used for war and terrorism. At the very least, the open sourcing of AI and LLMs to the wider public, the building of models that can code themselves, and the black box problem of AI and their data sets make them extremely hard to predict and control. Groups like OpenAI, DeepMind, and the Center of AI Safety, they've all warned how AI could lead to the loss of control with unforeseen consequences. Now, the second risk keeping me up at night is that generative AI is going to contribute to massive job displacement and economic disruption at a pace and scale that we've never seen in wealthy and poor countries alike. AI is already automating blue and white collar jobs. The OECD estimates that as many as 27% of all jobs are at risk of automation by AI in the next decade. Goldman Sachs predicts that 300 million full-time jobs are at risk around the world by 2030. Now, as all you know, AI is gonna hit repetitive manual tasks, but it's also gonna hit banking, media, marketing, the law, the arts, and a vast array of other jobs. And because this is all gonna happen incredibly quickly, it's critical to already identify alternatives like universal basic income and prepare for upskilling and training. What all this means is that generative AI could lead to a very skewed distribution of benefits and exacerbate economic inequalities with all the attendant political 
and social consequences. Now, a third risk relates to the way that AI-generated information pollution can amplify polarization and undermine confidence in democratic institutions. This is a particular concern this year in 2024, with more than 4 billion people going to the polls in over 60 elections around the world. There's a risk that AI enabled disinformation and misinformation that it could sway people to vote in one direction or deter them from voting entirely. But I think the real risk is that digital, digital harms distort and fracture our understanding of reality, what is perceived to be true or false. We're already seeing how hyper-realistic deepfakes, highly targeted automated disinformation campaigns, and state-backed interference are sowing discord and undermining trust. And we're also seeing a digitally enabled epidemic of mental illness, self-harm, and suicide, especially amongst teens and especially young girls, spawned by our digital dependencies. This is going to get much worse as micro-targeting gets much better, with bots becoming our perfect friends and influence operations infiltrating social ties. Think about it. People are already falling in love with LLMs. We seem more happy, more than happy to develop strange relationships with things we know not to be human. Now, when this starts happening at scale, it will be exceedingly hard to detect and very difficult to contain. The fourth risk I worry about relates to AI-powered bias and discrimination. We're already seeing how algorithmic biases refract societal biases, leading to discriminatory content and unfair decisions. There have been some widely publicized cases of this, at least in the United States, including in relation to facial recognition systems that are biased towards white faces and discriminate against black ones, loan and credit applications with people of color being unfairly treated, recruitment and hiring tools, predictive policing, online advertising, and even search and image creation tools. And the fifth risk relates to copyright security and privacy concerns. These are actually separate risks, even if there are connections between them. We're already seeing how LMs and the data that power them are subject to possible IP violations. Witness the lawsuits launched by everyone from Hollywood actors to the New York Times. And there are massive worries about threats of AI to security and privacy, especially when used to amplify digital surveillance. Now, there's a final risk, which relates to regulation or lack of regulation to address these very risks. While the dozen or so companies that are leading frontier AI model development have voiced concerns about risks, they are in no mood to slow down and lose competitive advantage. And although governments in the West, East, and Global South, they voice concerns, they've got divergent political and economic interests when it comes to AI. In today's tense geopolitical climate, and given the tremendous stakes involved, there are very strong incentives not to seed advantage by slowing down AI development. So given all this, how are governments, companies, and civil societies responding to these risks? Well, we've actually come a long way in a very short period of time. The release of ChatGPT in 22, the rise in course of concerns raised by AI experts and activists in 23, and growing public awareness today have spurred action in almost unimaginable ways. My team has tracked hundreds of binding and non-binding AI regulations, standards, and codes of conduct around the world over the past decade. And we've seen an explosion of regulatory action over the past two years. Not surprisingly, different countries are taking different approaches to regulating AI. Take China, which was actually an early mover in this space deeply concerned about the potential destabilizing effects of unregulated AI, the government issued a series of restrictive rules around generative AI, deep fakes, recommendation algorithms, and fake news back in 21. Today, no company can produce advanced AI in China without government approvals. The US really started stepping on the gas last year when the White House issued an executive order to clamp down on frontier models and authenticate synthetic content. A dozen states have also issued specific AI rules, which are now starting to take effect. And unlike China, U.S. lawmakers and businesses are much more concerned about how to ensure new rules reduce risk without stifling innovation and free speech. But it's the European Union that's probably the most advanced when it comes to mandating safe and ethical AI. Earlier this year, the EU finally passed the AI Act, the first ever legally binding framework on AI. In addition to establishing an AI governance structure, it prohibits AI practices that feature unacceptable risks, sets clear requirements for high risk applications, and defines the obligations and the liabilities of AI designers and deployers. Now, while far from perfect, the act reflects a deep understanding 
of how AI is trained, the multiple settings in which it can and is being used, and the range of potential risks, as well as how it ought to be treated in different application environments. And with so much AI regulation on the way, tech companies are also scrambling to create their own rules around AI safety and security. Big players like Amazon, Anthropic, Google, Inflection, Meta, Microsoft, and OpenAI, well, they've signed voluntary principles on AI safety and security and trust with the US White House back last year. These same firms have also agreed to an AI elections accord in February this year to better moderate deepfakes. And a growing number of tech companies, well, they're tagging and watermarking AI-generated content and introducing a series of technical innovations to try to limit the spread of dangerous digital harms. Now, while these are all welcome steps, there's also real concern about the ways in which power is increasingly concentrated in just a very small number of companies and individuals. So it's not surprising that the US Federal Trade Commission, as well as any trust authorities in the EU and the UK, have all recently opened up investigation into unfair competition practices. So watch that space. Now, while recent measures in China, the US and the EU, they're featured in global headlines, many countries and companies around the world are simultaneously establishing similar rules and standards to promote AI safety and security. One of my think tanks actually identified 470 AI rules, standards, and principles across more than 65 countries since 2011. Over two thirds of these arrangements were issued by governments and intergovernmental bodies and companies, while the rest were launched by digital rights groups, academics, and AI researchers. But all of them underline a number of very common principles, which are human-centered design and control, fostering digital inclusion, protecting human rights, safety and security, and transparency and accountability. But while AI regulation is spreading, it's still unevenly distributed geographically. We found that 63% of all those identified AI principles were created in just three jurisdictions, Europe, the US, and China. Just 2% were developed in African countries, 5% in Latin America and the Caribbean, and 19% in the rest of Asia. So a clear AI divide is emerging in terms of capability and regulation, one that reflects structural dynamics between comparatively wealthy and poor countries. And this is hardly surprising since most of the development, capital and talent is concentrated in the US, EU and China. There's much lower rates of investment in and adoption of AI in poorer parts of the world. But this poses a risk that regulatory regimes don't sufficiently account for the political, social, economic and cultural variations of the global South. So given all these developments, how is AI being perceived in the global South and especially in Africa? With all these debates swirling around about governance and regulating AI uh, in the US and Europe and China, Africa seems to be having a very different kind of conversation. To put it simply, Africa is talking much more about the opportunities than the risks. The continent has witnessed an explosion of AI-focused summits and events over the past year. A common refrain across virtually all of them is AI by Africa for Africa. In other words, AI development should be shaped by those it directly affects. And Africans are not just talking. We're seeing an exciting growth in AI startups and venture capital for AI development across the continent. One investment group has identified more than 2,400 companies specializing in AI. Major players like Google and Microsoft are also setting up innovation hubs from Accra to Nairobi. And we've also seen some countries putting in regulatory architecture. Egypt, Mauritius, Rwanda, and Senegal They've all released AI strategies, while Ghana, Kenya, and Nigeria, they're about to release their own frameworks in the coming months. Rwanda's plan has emphasized the way AI can turbocharge agriculture, health, banking, and e-government, and really is setting the pace. But Nigeria and South Africa, with their massive data pools, have the potential to become also major players. And at the regional level, the African Union just released a continental AI strategy this year, urging members to leverage AI for national development, economic growth, and digital transformation. Now, while Africa certainly doesn't lack ambition, it does suffer from a deficit of basic physical and social infrastructure for AI deployment. One big challenge is the lack of digital infrastructure, things like data centers, but also just basic digital connectivity and electricity. Another obstacle is the chronic shortage of digital skills, which limit Africans' abilities to design AI solutions tailored to local needs. And of course, there are a host of other challenges Africa has to contend with not least the potential of AI design and developed in the West to unintentionally discriminate and generate biased outcomes in the global South. The dependence in Africa and elsewhere 
on imported AI models and data sets can generate perverse outcomes that are misaligned with local realities. What's more, the influx of big tech into Africa's AI ecosystem, while offering incredible opportunities, could also lead to extractive practices and exploitive labor arrangements. So the global South and Africa in particular, it's at a crossroads when it comes to AI. On the one hand, African governments and businesses are determined to orient AI to address short and medium social and economic challenges as it should. On the other, they need to safeguard against a host of risks that are now increasingly well known. And they need to do all of this while addressing major infrastructural hurdles and navigating the complex geopolitical dynamics between the West and China. So my closing message is that now is the time to support Africa in navigating these challenges and seizing opportunities. That's because Africa has an opportunity to chart an exciting new path in AI, one that genuinely balances the goals of economic growth and development while simultaneously addressing deep and serious ethical and regulatory concerns.